This is a 2000 Chevy S10 Blazer and it's pretty rough. So the, the young man who brought it here, he just bought this. I think he kind of got taken advantage of or ripped off by a, a Facebook flipper. We'll take a tour, but it's got kind of all the hallmarks of a flipper. Anyway, I guess he drove it. It drove good, stopped good, ran good. No, no warning lights or any, any kind of deal breakers. So he bought it. And as soon as he got it home, it just kind of, kind of fell apart on him. Anyway, he wasn't really even sure what was wrong with it. I've, I've taken a kind of a cursory look at it. It has no brakes. The master cylinder is dry, so it's probably got a bad brake line. Uh, the four wheel drive doesn't work. The service four wheel drive light is on. The check engine light is not on. It has no codes, but the engine runs like crap. It's missing and yeah, there's something definitely wrong there. He said there's some vacuum lines under the hood that are messed up. I don't know if it's just for the four wheel drive system or what we're going to find there. He said it did have a P1875 code stored. I don't know what that is. I haven't looked that up yet. And then he also says when he drives it, he can smell a burning smell and it smells electrical to him. So maybe we got a shorted wire somewhere or something like that. A uh, bunch of other stuff. The tailgate doesn't open. The AC compressor just short cycles. So it's probably low on, on Freon. The tires are all mismatched. Yeah. Anyway, he doesn't have a lot of money to spend. He said, basically just try to diagnose as many problems as we can in two hours. If we can fix them, great. If not, he'll take it home and, and try to fix it himself. So that's the plan. We're going to look it over, sort of get an idea of what's wrong, make a list for him. And uh, yeah, hopefully he can get it fixed up. Oh, so he's got the 4.3 liter V6, which is just a small block Chevy V8 with two cylinders hacked off. I believe it's throttle body injection, which being a 2000, that's got to be about the last year for that. So it's a pretty old school setup, really. It's like a new alternator. Uh, the battery light is on, but I believe the charging system is working. Batteries is fully charged, so. Not sure what's up with that. Looks pretty decent under here, really. Let's see, we've got some some problems with the vacuum lines. He told me about that, so we'll have to fix that. Yeah, so he's leaking quite a bit of oil, uh, but the cosmetics are where we really, really lose some points on this guy. She's got the full on Earl Scheib treatment here. They just kind of crudely taped off the fender wells or flares, whatever you call them, and then aerosol overhaul it's got runs everywhere she's got the the advanced rust hiders with the self-tapping screws yeah just paint right over that rust that'll be fine and then it has no brakes give you guys a little clue why that might be that's right, compression fittings. There's some brake fluid on the floor, so. Yeah, that's not gonna work. I think the wheels are probably my favorite. So they just painted the aluminum rims, but they didn't even bother to tape off or mask the tires. So the tires are just covered in black overspray. I guess it's like free tire black. Yeah. And the rockers are just completely gone on this side. You can tell by the, uh, the multiple, multiple choice here on sheet metal screws. Looks like it took five attempts to get one that would hold. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, so that's what we're dealing with. I'm gonna fire it up. I'll show you guys how it runs. It's not good. Of course, it smells like the bottom of an ashtray. All right, so the check engine light is working now. When I first pulled it in, that would not come on. So we got some kind of cluster problem or something's going on there. It 
So we got over 14 volts, but the battery light's still on. Service four wheel drive, low fuel. Brake lights on, of course, because the cylinder, the reservoir is empty. Yeah, it's just not running very good. Yeah, the whole car is shaking right now. Maybe you guys can see it. All right. Yeah, so we're using the, the Launch X431. The only codes it has is some U codes, some communication codes for the memory seat module and the, the airbags. But there's nothing here that's really, I don't think gonna help us. Okay, so let's just go here and we'll see if we can get some some fuel trims or something. I checked the misfires, it has no misfire counters. We could try generic OBD2, but I don't think it's gonna help us too much. So let's go here. Yeah, she's not happy. So we got nothing on the bank one, sensor one. The other two are working. So we got 14% on both short-term fuel trims. It's adding a bunch of fuel. Still an open loop. Well, this is a problem right here. So that O2 sensor is completely dead. Uh, also, the lights are on. Headlights, parking lights. Front and rear. But the switch is off. Isn't it? Okay. Well, that's weird. What does this do? Nothing. Okay, so that might be a problem. I better start making a list. Also, we've lost our service engine soon light key on engine off. I think that should be on all the time. So, I don't know, we got some electronic weirdness going on here. The four wheel drive does nothing. Service four wheel drive lights on, but it has no codes for four wheel drive. What's up with that? I don't know. All right, let's not worry about this for right now. I think it may have daytime running lights, which is why the, the headlights are on all the time. Uh, according to service data, the service four wheel drive light comes on when there's a code set in the active transfer case module. But I don't think I can communicate with that. Let's see here. Okay, so I got communication with the transmission module. Yes. Yeah, it has nothing. It cannot communicate with the active transfer case module. So I guess let's find out where that is. Maybe that'll give us a clue. See, now our check engine light's back on. I don't know. All right, we're still working on the four wheel drive. The 
transfer case control module lives down here in the passenger footwell behind the kick panel. I've got a wiring diagram. We're going to check powers and grounds, but before we even do that, come on. That black connector is looking kind of green and crusty, isn't it? Let me see if I can get it apart and we'll, uh, we'll assess the situation. Bingo, baby. The green crusties. All right, what is that? That is the orange wire, pin D. What does pin D do? Looks like it should be hot at all times. So that's the main power feed for the transmission control module. That's what gives it power to run the stepper motor or whatever actually shifts the gears. So that's a problem. All right, we do have power there and a ground. So I think maybe we can just clean that terminal up, hopefully. The pin in the module looks okay. So yeah, let's do some scraping and some spraying and possibly we can save that thing. Yeah, same story on the orange one. Uh, we'll try it, see what happens. This guy will try these tweezers. They look kind of like a file almost. I don't know, that thing's pretty loose. Wonder if we can depin it some way. There we go. All right, let's see if we can get a terminal release tool in there. There we go. Okay. Yeah. She is crusty. a little tweak here. That's more like it. Okay. Now we gotta tweak down the little locking tab. Like so it's about as clean as we're gonna get it.
go. Where's my locking tab? There you are. Beautiful. I think that'll work. Hopefully I didn't tweak that terminal too far. I don't think I did. I did the same thing to the module. So we should be able to just plug this guy in. And see what happens. I don't want to use dielectric grease on these. We probably could on these high amperage terminals. But on this guy, might cause some problems. You don't usually want to use any kind of of a grease on a on a communication line, low voltage or low amperage stuff like that. Well, we still have no communication with that module, at least as far as I can tell. So, yeah, the service four-wheel drive light's still on. All right, we know we have this power and this ground, but it looks like we do not have this power and or this ground. So it should be pin 10 and pin 16, well, E10 and E16 on that orange connector. And I'm back probed into those with the key on and we have no power. So I think pop this guy out here and just hook it up to a ground yeah we got no power there so we need to check the fuse four-wheel drive fuse 15 10 amp all right 15 amp fuse that guy right there and it is good huh Okay, so we've got a problem somewhere between there and the transmission module. Uh, by the way, check this out. That's the door striker. And they've, uh, they've welded a, a patch in there to reattach that. <sighs> this thing is, this thing has been around. All right, we're missing this power here to E10. And there's a splice pack, SP200. And out of that comes some stuff here for the front drive clutch solenoid. So that's on a different diagram. There's a solenoid right there. So this brown wire should be hot with the key on. And I'm pretty sure that's the solenoid right there. And it is not hot with the key on. So, that means we have, well, we likely have no power after this C203. I don't know where C203 is, we'll see if we can find that. Also, we might be able to test this transfer case, transfer case shift control switch, which I believe is the panel on the dash. So that comes out of a splice at the instrument panel. Let's find C203. Well, according to service data, behind door number one, That great big thing right there should be C203. I believe that's for all the controls in the dash. So yeah, the pin we want is K2 and K is the second row from the left. I don't know where two is, must not be at the top because that's not populated. So it must be on the bottom side. Let's, uh that back up. Can we see the bottom side of it? Not really. <laughs> oh boy. All right, folks, we can call off the search. We found the burning smell. There's our brown wire going into K2. It's melted all the way up the harness. It's like it melted into this green wire, probably melted into a bunch of other wires. So I think we're gonna find a big mess in here. 
he's lucky the thing didn't catch on fire. And the next question is, what caused that to happen? There's got to be a short somewhere downstream of that, I would think, to cause that wire to burn up. I don't know. That's a problem, though. Big problem. <laughs> All right, folks. Things have escalated quickly. Uh, so we were missing power here which comes from this SP200 splice pack. I found that. It is that little guy right there. Actually, it's only the first three pins of that little guy. There's four splices in that connector. Uh, but we've got big problems. So the splice pack there's five wires in the splice pack. I believe that, yeah, one comes in on H and then it goes out to the control module. Yeah, that's this one right here. And then terminal G in the splice pack goes to, well, it's shown better on this page. So this is G terminal of the splice pack and one wire goes to the four-wheel drive indicator switch which I believe is in the front axle and the other goes to the vehicle control module the VCM which is the computer the ECM the PCM whatever you want to call it so here's the problem I'll try to show you so there's the splice pack pin one, pin two, pin three. So the, the wire coming out of the third pin is fine. Not worried about that. Uh, we have a melted wire coming in, which is the power feed to the splice pack. And then we have a melted wire that goes out and it goes that way down the wiring harness. The problem is there's two wires that come out of this splice pack that are both brown that both go that way down the wiring harness. And I don't know, you see this one is melted, the other one is fine. I don't know which one is which. If it's the power feed to the computer or the power feed to the four wheel drive switch in the front axle. Somewhere, one of those wires has shorted to ground. And then, I don't know, somebody put in a bigger fuse or something and they just they just made a terrible mess out of this. So, yeah, this is not a good situation. So we've got a melted wire that runs all the way through this harness. Well, actually, it's probably melted all the way from the fuse box, all the way across the dash, through the connector, down here into the splice pack, and then back across the transmission hump, back out through the firewall on the driver's side, and then up into the engine bay somewhere. So we got two problems. The first problem is I have no idea where that wire is shorted to ground. It could be anywhere from the splice pack all the way out to, you know, the front axle or the PCM, the middle of the engine bay, you know, who knows. And the second problem is even if we did know where it was shorted to ground, you know, what the hell can we do about it? To fix this, it really needs the entire wiring harness from the fuse box all the way over here to this big connector. And then from this connector, the harness that goes all the way out into the engine bay. I mean, that's, that's like the entire wiring harness for the truck. You know, first of all, you'd never find one of those because all these things are in the crusher. At least around here, these things rusted out like crazy. And then even if you could find one, you'd spend a month of Sundays putting that, th putting that stuff all together. I mean, it's a major job. The whole dash would have to come out. Center console had to come out. Yeah, I don't know. Even if we just clipped that stuff, you know, and disabled the four-wheel drive or overlaid some wires, you know, what else has, has those, have those wires melted into, you know, that could easily be the reason why we have the battery light on and why the check engine light sometimes doesn't come on, you know, anything in this harness is now suspect. 
yeah, I mean, you can see all the wires are just stuck together. I don't know. I hate to say it, but it almost would have been better if it went up in flames. At least then, uh, yeah, at least then we'd have some closure. Well, I thought about this overnight. There are three brown wires that come out of that splice pack and go through the firewall over here, kind of underneath that cruise control servo. So one of them goes right here to the solenoid for the front axle. I believe that one is fine. That's the one that's kind of by itself in the splice, according to the diagram anyway. The other one goes either here to the, the VCM, the computer, on this terminal here, pin 13, or it goes down here, kind of behind the intake manifold, or sorry, the, the air filter box. Uh, underneath that cloth wrap there, there's a, a plug for the switch in the front axle that tells the four-wheel drive that that's engaged and it runs well let's put it this way i have a hard time believing that the wire is shorted to ground in that loom that runs along the cowl there to the ecm there's just it's well supported there's nothing for it to really rub on but this one over here behind the air box it runs along the fender well and it looks pretty crusty down there it's underneath the abs unit here I think we're going to peel some of this stuff out of the way and maybe just get a look around. Oh, somebody's been in here. What were they doing? Alright folks, that was a bust. I can't see any real problems down there. The, the top of the fender is, it's rusty, but there's nothing that pokes through the harness. I just, I don't see any, I don't see anything. <laughs> Alright folks, I've made a revelation. I pulled the air box off and things became a lot more clear. So if we look at this connector, looks okay from a distance but on closer inspection see that wire it is melted then if we follow the harness which is this guy right here it's leaning against the uh, steering column but more importantly it is contacting the exhaust manifold so that lady is your problem we have a dead short on that wire man that's crazy so that makes me feel a whole lot better well dial up the sketchiness i chopped the wire that comes from the fuse to the splice and i just clipped onto it with a uh, a feed directly from the battery and I powered it up. Let me put an amp clamp on here. So it is pulling some amperage through there, but not very much. Anyway, long story short, guess what? We can now communicate with the transmission or the transfer case control module. So this is the live data. That's pretty cool. So that means that this gizmo works, or at least we can talk to it. So I wonder what else we can make work. So we've got a light now 
for too too high. We never had that before. Looky, looky. Okay. Let's start it up. Look at that, no battery light, no service four wheel drive light. Uh, 20 millivolts is 200 milliamps, that's nothing. So whatever was shorted is not shorted now. Yeah, the box is out of there now. It's supposed to be a 15 amp fuse, but I will bet you dollars to donuts that somebody put something in there with a little more horsepower and uh, they made a big mess for us. So now, now, what can we do about that? I'm kind of thinking maybe we just overlay a couple wires and uh, yeah, let the chips fall where they may. Definitely don't park it in the garage and uh, we'll send this guy on his way. Uh, some time has passed on the little blazer. We've, uh, I've just been getting slammed. Let me catch you guys up. Uh, I've got good news and bad news on the wiring. So the good news is this harness here that runs down to the switch is made from a heavier gauge wire. And for whatever reason, it did not, it did not melt. The wires are in good shape other than the section that actually contacted the manifold. And I've gone ahead and patched in a piece for that. The bad news is that the, uh, the contact was actually on the return wire from that switch, which means that all the current that melted those wires went through the switch in the front axle. And I imagine it's not rated for any kind of, any kind of an amperage load. It's just designed to turn on a circuit in the computer. So there's a good possibility that the, the switch in the axle is gonna be melted or the contacts are, are fried. Yeah, I looked at it, it's at the bottom of the axle. I don't wanna pull it out because we're gonna lose all the fluid. So we're just gonna put this wiring together. The wiring I think is fine. And then if it doesn't work, we may suspect the switch. I talked to the customer. He said, go ahead and just overlay the wires and he's willing to roll the dice on whatever damage is in the harness. So that's fine with me. As far as I'm concerned, that's a, a pre-existing problem. We haven't done anything to make that any worse. So what I've done right here, if you guys can see it, I've just snipped off that burned wire at the back of the fuse panel and I crimped on a new wire, covered it up with some heat shrink and I'm just going to run that wire, you know, loosey goosey underneath the bottom of the dash. So there's that wire right there. We'll bypass the big bulk connector. We'll just loop it around and then we're going to snip off all these wires at the factory splice and really there's two wires that go out through the firewall one for the computer and one for the solenoid for the vacuum those are fine we'll reuse those the third wire that runs out to that switch we're going to have to bypass so what i did is i just popped out the grommet for the antenna and i stuffed a wire right through that guy I think there should be only three wires left in this splice. I've already cut the burned up wire coming in and the burned up wire going out. So we're gonna want this one. That goes, I think, to the, to the TCCM, the control module. I don't want this one right here. That goes out to the solenoid. And then we're gonna want this one. Which 
goes out to the VCM. Tiny wires, 22 American wire gauge, 0.35 square millimeters. Okay, that should do it. Now I've got to tape all this crap back up because I cut, I don't know, two feet of tape off this thing trying to get down to that splice. All right, folks, we're looking pretty good. All taped up, loomed up, connected up. Should work just fine. Yeah, same story under the hood. So our new new patch wire runs behind the ABS module right back down to the original connector. And I just chopped off that wire and it's just hanging out there. Of course, we'll reuse the original return wire. We just have to supply the, the new power feed. And then I patched up the harness running down to the switch. I tied it off to that power steering line so it's Nowhere near the exhaust manifold. And that should work. Hopefully. With some luck. It's like we were never here. I got the fuses all sorted out. They had a bunch of the wrong sizes installed. Uh, I talked to the customer. He told me that when he first looked at it, that fuse 15 for the four wheel drive had a 25 amp fuse in it. And when I looked at it, it had a 15 amp fuse in it. It's actually supposed to be a 10. So we're all set there. Everything looks pretty good under here. I did install a fitting in that vacuum line just to clean that up a little bit instead of having the hose jammed in the other hose. And the lines are kind of long. He'll have to shorten that and tidy that up, but it'll be good enough for now. I am going to keep this, this model in mind for my master list of GM's worst airbox designs. This thing's a real delight. You see how the upper radiator hose goes right over top of it, and then the other side's jammed up against the fuse box. You wouldn't think it would be that hard to design a box to hold an air filter that can actually be opened and serviced by a normal human. But for whatever reason, the concept is just out of grasp for the GM engineering team. They, they just can't figure it out. I love the part where there's four screws holding the lid of the airbox on, but there's only one bolt holding the whole stinking airbox in the car. All right. So our warning lights are out. We have something here. Yeah, that's working. Right? Come on, little buddy. You can do it. Maybe it's got to move forward a little bit. There it is. All right, try low. 
Yeah, I felt it. She's a lot of fun with no brakes. So that means our switch must have survived because I believe these lights won't come on without that axle switch working. There it is. All right. Good enough for me. All right, folks, we're done. The blazer lives to die another day. Here's what I think happened. I think the harness has been rubbing against the manifold for a long time. And when it does that, it should just blow that 10 amp fuse, shut that circuit down, and it's not really a problem. The problem is you lose your four wheel drive and you have all those lights on, on the dash. So it probably hasn't had four wheel drive for a long time. And then along comes our intrepid Facebook flipper and he wants to get that four wheel drive working so he can get every nickel he can out of it. So he probably put, a ten, put the 10 amp fuse back in and it immediately blew. And so he, you know, fixed it by just putting a 25 amp fuse in the circuit. And at that point, this 22 gauge wire became the fuse. And uh, yeah, buyer beware, I guess. I don't really know what, what he could have done about it. You know, you can inspect that, but how would you know to look for a shorted circuit in the four wheel drive system that's potentially gonna burn your car down. Yeah. You wouldn't. Anyway, doesn't matter. I was, uh, yeah, I was kind of thinking it was gonna be the end of it when I saw all those burned wires in that splice pack. There still, I'm sure, is damage to the other wires in that, that wiring harness. And like I said, there could be some cross you know, cross shorting between different circuits that could cause problems in the future. But as long as we have the right fuses in the right positions, you know, those circuits should be protected and that, that risk should be, it should be pretty minimal. Otherwise, I don't know what we could really do about it. Like I said, it's not economical or maybe even possible to replace all those wiring harnesses. It just, it wouldn't be worth it. Yeah, what would be worth it is for you to go down to the comment section and type out a comment. Tell me about your uh, experience with a shady Facebook flipper or uh, yeah, whatever else you've got to say. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.